ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the tatva chintan pharma chem limited q3 fy24 earnings conference call hosted by icsc securities as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand over the conference over to mr sanjay jain from icic securities thank you and over to you sir thanks tushar uh, good afternoon everyone uh, thank you for joining on tatva chintan pharma chem limited q3 and 9 month fy24 uh, results conference call uh, we have tatva chintan management on the call represented by mr chintan shah managing director mr ashok gotra chief financial officer and mr ajesh pille uh, investor relations i would like to invest invite mr dinesh sodani agm finance to initiate with opening remarks post which uh, we will have a q and a session over to you dinesh ji thank you sanjay ji good evening everyone on behalf of the management i am pleased to welcome all of you to tatva chintan's earning call to discuss financial results of the quarter and nine month ended december 2023 please note that a copy of all our disclosures are available in the investor section of our website as well as on the stock exchange anything discussed on this call which reflects our outlook for the future or which could be construed as forward looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces now i shall hand over the call to our managing director mr chintan shah over to you sir thank you dinesh good afternoon everyone and welcome to this investor call This time, I am pleased to introduce you, introduce you to Mr. Rajesh Pillai, who I am trying to delegate lot of my responsibilities in terms of investor relationship. Rajesh has worked with me for nearly a decade now, and I don't have any doubts in his efficiency, and I'm sure he is going to do a good job. And today's speech, whatever the management side commentary has been written by me, I'm sitting right next to Rajesh. so whatever he is speaking it is his voice but written by me and i am gradually trying to hand over this responsibilities over to him over a period of time over to you ajesh thank you sir good evening and wish you all a very happy new year i feel privileged to take up this responsibility and hope i can serve the company and its investors to the best of my ability now coming to the numbers This quarter, your company reported a revenue from operations of rupees 842 million, a degrowth of 30% year on year and 13% quarter on quarter. As conveyed to you during the last earning call, the industrial challenge continued in the third quarter too. The EBITDA for the quarter is rupees 110 million, a decline of 39% year on year and 46% quarter on quarter. Revenue from operations for the three quarters of this financial year is rupees. 2952 million as compared to rupees 200 2991 million for the same period in the previous financial year recording a marginal decline of 1% whereas the corresponding ebitda is rupees 526 million and rupees 443 million respectively depicting a growth of 19% year on year further when we look at the product segment wise numbers PTC have registered a quarterly revenue of rupees 248 million a growth of 7% quarter on quarter and a decline of 24% year on year the 9 months revenue of PTC stand at rupees 796 million registering a decline of 25% year on year talking about electrolyte salts have registered a quarterly revenue of rupees 12 million a growth of 2% quarter on quarter and a degrowth of 71% year on year the cumulative revenue for three quarters for the segment stand at rupees 37 million declining by 77% year on year when we come to pharma and agro intermediates and specialty chemicals they have registered a quarterly revenue of rupees 254 million a decline of 12% quarter on quarter and 4% year on year The revenue of the same for three quarters of this financial year stands at rupees 852 million, registering a degrowth of 18% year on year. And when we talk about SDS, SDS registered a quarterly revenue of rupees 323 million, 
a decline of 24% quarter on quarter and 43% year on year the nine monthly figure for the same is at rupees 1247 million registering a growth of 71% year on year i'll now give you an overview of the business in the past quarter and outlook over the mid term we have traveled extensively in past few months and have met most of the key customers in person based on the discussion and their forecast for the calendar year 2024 also looking at the slowly improving business sentiments we are quite confident to state that next two quarters we will observe gradually improving business sentiment and expect shifting of gears from august onwards that is quarter 2 of financial 2025 the so quarter 3 of financial year 24 was expected to be a slow demand quarter because of the financial year end for our global customers and with their priority of controlling the inventory some of the dispatch schedule got postponed to the next quarter but considering the overall market and demand situation in quarter 3 of financial year 24 the overall achievement and numbers are satisfactory let me give uh, you a brief about the developments and the outlook by each category starting with phase transfer catalyst we are happy to say that the despite of aggressive competition we have successful in retaining all the major export customers for ptc supplies for calendar year 2024 and also maintaining our margins when we come to sds except for china the demand situation has been steadily improving of the ongoing validation at a new potential customer during the quarter we got formally approved on three different applications and we have received initial commercial orders from the customer the fourth application is under validation and should get results by end of march 2024 we expect business to be modest in the first half and eventually get to a decent volume from the end of calendar year 2024 our existing large customer has approved us on two products and we will have larger business on one product from july quarter and on the second product from october quarter the demand from this customer has been steadily growing in other development we are now fully qualified with two other customers that is customer number 6 and 7 for automotive applications we will see onset of business from april quarter with this customers overall sda demands are improving and we shall see a robust next financial year in terms of sda business when we come to electrolyte salt business the business has been slower than anticipated primarily due to poor offtake in china market the other large customer has started buying regularly due to their efforts in controlling the inventory they are currently buying at a slower pace but they are also setting up a fully automated production line for energy storage battery this will go online in august 2024 and will increase their demand drastically our approval with the large european customer has progressed very well and from october 2024 we shall see onset of business so 2025 is definitely going to be a very good growth year for electrolyte business on another customer side our electrolyte solution from large scale has approved few months back now we have been asked to go to the pilot scale and submit electrolyte this is another large opportunity where we are making steady progress when we come to the pac segment of our products on pharma intermediates two out of three products are approved by production trials third product will be kept under use test in march at customers plant final formal validation of three products are expected to be in place by september and onset of commercial business is scheduled from beginning of 2025 on agro intermediates two products have been fully approved and third is under validation we expect robust growth from quarter 2 of financial year 25 and in this segment as two products get in commercial supplies from august and third products from third product from november we are happy to share that we have received firm approval of our first photochlorination product from pilot scale the installation of commercial photochlorination equipment has been completed at the h plant we have been asked to supply one container of this product for final approval which we expect to ship out of out, out by end of march this is again an agro intermediate with very large application our pilot trials apparently have been running smoothly however we face certain teething issues which we have now identified the potential reason for the issue and 
are now restarting the trials after necessary equipment modifications. The good part is that the technology or the catalyst is a success and once these operation issues have been sorted, we are moving towards commercialization in 2025. To conclude, the chemical industry continues to face headwinds and pain is not completely over yet. However, for us, combination of focus, customer relationships and our R&D ability uh, gives us underlying resilience to our business model. In addition, encouraging response from our customers, the manuf manufacturing infrastructure in place will help the company get advantage of the change in industry trends. In meantime, we expect this to sustain these challenges, challenging times with grit and integrity. With this, I hand over the call to our CFO, Mr. Ashok Bhutra, to take you through the financial results. Thank you, Ajishi. Uh, good evening to everyone present on our call today. Now I would like to share the financial highlights for the quarter and nine months. During Q3 FY24, the company reported revenue from operation of 842 million, a degrowth of 30 percent YOY basis. Other income during the quarter was at 12 million. During the quarter, the company reported EBITDA of 110 million, a degrowth of 39 percent YOY basis. EBITDA margins were at 13.1% versus 14.9% versus in the same period previous year. During the quarter, the company reported PAT of 35 million, a degrowth of 70% YOY basis. PAT margins were at 4.1% versus 9.6% in the same period previous year. During nine months, FY24, the company reported revenue from operation of 2,952 million, a degrowth of 1%. During 9 month FY24, the company reported EBITDA of 526 million, a growth of 19% YOY basis. EBITDA margins were at 17.8% versus 14.8% in the same period previous year. The company reported PAT of 207 million, a degrowth of 27% YOY basis for the 9 month FY24. PAT margin was at 7% versus 9.5% in the same period previous year. During nine month FI24, the employee expenses were at 14% of revenue versus 9% during nine month FI23 due to new recruitment on account of newly commissioned facilities during the year and also recruitment towards the new R&D facility at Baroza. During Q3 FY24, exports stood at 525 million, comprising 62% of the revenue from operation. And during nine month FY24, the exports stood at 2084 million, comprising 71% of the revenue from operation. The custom, company has a customer base spanning over 25 plus countries. That concludes an update on the financial highlights of the company. I shall now request the moderator to open the floor for question and answer session. Uh -huh. Uh, sorry, Bhutraji, I would like to take a couple of minutes. <clears throat> I think Ajesh has missed a couple of points on his uh, speech. So let me cover that up. Uh, on the PASC segments, uh, beginning with monocline, our pilot trials apparently have been running smoothly, but recently we had a couple of hiccups in terms of safety. We have now identified the potential reason for the issues being generated and are now restarting the trials after necessary equipment modification. The good part is that the technology or the catalyst is a success, and once these operational issues have been sorted out, we are moving towards commercialization definitely in 2025. The development work of various projects on continuous flow basis and a couple of projects on electrolysis basis are progressing very well. We expect to scale up three products to pilot scale by June 2024. We are adding two more continuous flow reactors in our labs, also adding one continuous flow reactor at the pilot plant. Our technical discussion and designing of a full-scale plant-scale plant continuous flow reactor is nearing completion. Updates about flame retardants. The market situation in this segment continues to remain very sluggish, so we have not yet started commercial production, but we continue our development of products. 
This quarter, we have completed development of our second product, meeting with all the stringent requirements of specifications. Looking at now, we, we now have definitive timelines of commercialization of six products on the PASC, three on the pharma side and three on the agro side. Looking at these short, short timelines, we are absolutely sure of running out of plant capacities by the end of 2024. We, to ensure smooth progress, we have decided to move forward with a plan of CAPEX of about 700 million INR and set up one plant with 150 KL reactors in a separate distillation plant. In December, we finally received, December of 2023, we finally received the formal environmental clearance for the greenfield project at our new land in Jolwa Dahej. First, we intend to expand our existing site at Dahej, which will be much quicker, and then we will open the site construction at the new site in Jolwa in 2025. We expect to close FY24 with a revenue in the range of about 400 to 410 crores and roughly an EBITDA margin carrying at about 20% levels. We continue to remain sure of FY25 to be the next phase of growth led by growing volumes and new customers in SDS and also by multiple new products getting into commercializations in the PSA. Thank you. And now please let us open up the floor for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Suruchi. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity. Intel, why? Uh, just want to understand uh, because the, if I see SDSL. More or less, we have done the SDA sales of the last year in a nine months only. And if, if what I remember, the SDA was the highest margin product in our uh, overall segment in, in 2022 is the, also the major driver of the margin. So is that the margin in SDA is going down in the last 18 months or something? Or what, Matla? Because we don't know the margin wise something because our margin profile has also gone down. Top line has gone down. I will come to that also. But the margin is also going down. I think this one we have done. Yeah. Uh, in April, uh, late April this year, we started commercial production from the newly expanded capacities. So our expenses in terms of recruitment, I think we have added nearly 130 people so far from April to December. Uh, your uh, terms of consumption of fuel, power, everything has shot up because we have nearly doubled the production capacities. The new capacities have practically, we have been utilizing only for you know production of this new six products that we did and supply to the customers for validation. And also three of our large products where we needed, again, a prior approval from the customer that if we are going to change a plant to produce it, then we would need an approval. So those were the three products which went to this new facility for, again, practically on terms of validation purpose. So apparently this new facility seems to be very busy, but ideally speaking, this new facility is really not generating any revenue so far. This is number one. So the margins in SDAs are absolutely intact, but the issue is on apps of cost because of relatively low usage of the available capacities. In terms of top line, both in PTCs and SDAs, there is a severe drop in raw material pricing. And since most of the product pricing are linked uh, with your raw material prices in a equation with a customer, so when your raw material prices go down, you're typically the final product prices also have to be relatively adjusted. In terms of PTCs, I would say the relative drop in terms of finished good pricing has been nearly 
25 to 30 percent. In terms of uh, SDAs, the margin, the price realizations have dropped by nearly 20 to 30 percent. But this is not, there is no movement in terms of the actual price realization in terms of margin for the product. So per kg basis, still the margins remain intact. The only thing is you see a lower top line uh, in terms of uh, value realization is going down. Okay, got it. So in terms of volume, if we want to see, then how much we did as compared to last year, nine months? Near, so in terms of that, I will have to give you the exact number, but I assume it's a growth of about 30% compared to last year in terms of volume. Okay. Are we and saying this is again, just to brief you what is the real situation on SDA. So we have four commercial customers so far. Out of these, two are actively buying. Our largest customer and the fourth new customer in a different geography, these two are the customers who are regularly buying. Our second largest customer is in China, who is yet to resume buying, who has not bought a single kg product since last one year. And the third customer from the European territory has started buying, but is still on a very small volume. So practically this growth, whatever numbers are we are seeing in terms of SDA volumes and uh, value is technically coming only from two customers who are now back to nearly normal volumes of what they used to buy pre-COVID levels. And now with this largest customer, we are now approved for two different products where we didn't have the prior opportunity. So now we have been fully approved. One product goes into commercialization from June quarter and second product we expect to start selling to them from the October quarter, coming, coming June and coming October quarter. So this will also push up the volumes. Another interesting development on SDA, as Ajesh already talked about, is out of the four applications we were under validation with one of a very large potential customer, we have been approved on three of them, and we have already received the initial purchase orders for the current quarter from this customer. And the fourth application, we expect to have final validation results out by March of this year. Uh, again, their volumes are low for this year, but they expect to start a handsome, quali handsome commercialization for this volume beginning from October of 24. So definitely volumes and value in SDA is going to become very interesting. Uh, again, we have two more customers. Of course, the business is not very large on those two new accounts, but we have been approved for the autom automotive application by these two customers. Uh, potentially, we may see a value coming in at about uh, two, two and a half million US dollars from these customers. So it's not a very large account, but these two customers are new addition, which were not there on our list. So customer number six, customer number seven. So all these put together, everything gets into commercialization beginning from April to October. So I'm sure SDA is going to be a very interesting year. Uh, next financial year is going to be quite interesting in terms of SDA. Uh, thank you. The next question is from the line of Sudarshan Padmanabhan from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. Sir, my question is, has there been any kind of a deferral of uh, you know sales in any of the business? Uh, you know, Because it looks like the revenue run rate has... Uh, substantially fallen or is it just that the lower demand that has driven mm -hmm. this kind of amount? No. Padmanabhanji, there were about 11 containers which were postponed to this quarter from the December quarter. So there was some deferral because none of the major customers wanted any invoices to be raised in the because it was their year ending and they are probably trying to show good numbers in terms of their inventory values. So they didn't want any invoices to be raised in December and everything got postponed to January. So that is one part, but it is not a very significant amount. But the large contribution is coming from the drop in prices. Because if you see a 25% price drop in PTCs and SDA, is really significant uh, impacting your top line. So that is one of the key reasons. I, I would not say that business has been improving steadily. But uh, uh, the only impacted segment, I would say, was uh, the electrolyte salts, where definitely demands were very low. But apart from that, I'm not. I'm really happy with the performance that we have done in the last quarter. 
the major aspect is we have to raise these volumes and this is what we expect to start from august because once you start producing your pases i'm sure we are going to run out of plant capacities august onwards and that is the reason why we are keep starting a capex uh, immediately and investing about 70 crores on that uh, and once you have this plant getting fully occupied is when you will really see the numbers coming in because most of this cost goes on absorb in terms of uh, the up, uh, the overhead cost goes a lot of this overhead cost goes on absorb because of lower lower utilization sure sir so any idea how much is this 11 containers in terms of sales sir until it sales will it be decent enough uh, it was roughly about 11 crores 11 11.4 crores roughly about okay and sir, uh, with respect to the ongoing tensions on the Red Sea, do we see any kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, impact specifically going forward on our business? Logistic costs have shot up like anything. Of course, past quarter, we have not seen that impact, but logistic cost is going to be impacted in this current quarter. Uh, freight rates to Europe, we have seen skyrocketed from... Uh, Roughly about 900 US dollar a box container freight from India to uh, main European port. The freight has gone up from 900 to nearly 3500 USD. So that's a significant cost that probably everyone is going to incur. Similar is the situation on the US route. Uh, but besides that, I, do, I mean, besides the marginal cost that you are going to incur, I don't see any other major impact coming in from that situation. So that will basically help reprice the product as well, right? I mean, that way. So it will not happen in immediately. So it will happen over a time. So one quarter you are going to absorb that cost more or less. Sure, sir. And sir, coming to your guidance earlier, you know, our guidance was, you know, uh, the sales, you know, going about 70% to 100% in FI25. And if I, you know, go by, you know, our current guidance that we are going to run out of capacity now, which means that you are primarily looking at the FY25 numbers being very similar to what we had initially thought, or even slightly higher. Uh, but probably there could be one quarter of pain. So is that a right way to look at it, sir? I would assume at least a 70% growth is uh, justifiable. That is considering primarily because we are going to see a lot of value erosion has already happened in terms of value of the products on BTCs and SDAs. Otherwise, the, the numbers would have been even bit better. And also, the all the three agro products which we were actually scheduled to begin commercially from February or March of uh, 2024, because of their poor offtake and their demand and their constraints in terms of productivity, these have been gradually postponed, 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 and now been rescheduled to start commercialization from July and August. And now this is firm, it seems. So now they have instructed us and they have started planning to place the POs and stuff like that. So now I don't see this is very firm timeline to start commercialization from August of 24. Sure. And beyond FI25, we will also see the opportunity in the BS7 on the SDA side, which is where I would assume that the new capacity is also coming in. Yes. Again, unfortunately, the SDA BS7 got shifted from 2025 to 2027. So, yes. So, next year is not going to be the BS7, but the year after that, so FY26 is when we'll see actual commercialization of the BS7 also happening. And also, we are, as Ajesh, as I mentioned on my later on speech, is we are also commercializing. So piloting three new products which are involving continuous flow chemistry and electrolysis. So again, these are very nice molecules. One of them is good getting into the battery uh, materials or the electrolyte products. And the rest two of them are getting into the polymer side of the chemistry. And these are very large size molecules and we see a good potential. Each of these molecules carrying a worth value of about 50 crores in terms of revenue potential is what we are piloting in this June. Up to June, we will pilot all these three new products. Sure. And sir, one final thing before I join the uh, queue is, you know, uh, after the price erosion, you know, of 
products across the segment the current capacity i mean now what do you think should be the asset turn and should be the optimum you know sales that one should expect and also mm-hmm. if you can give some color on the margin i mean what should one expect in fact in decide the asset turn is taking very interesting uh, changes because with this newer chemistries these are more lengthier chemistries so far when we were involved into ptcs and sdas and electrolyte salts we were typically seeing an asset turn of in excess of 3 now when we are looking at these all new psc segment products which are multi stage chemistry so you require more number of reactors to achieve the desired product so the asset turn is now looking at 1 is to 1.5 maximum 1 is to 2 but realistically speaking 1 is to 1.5 is what we are looking at for all the new products that we have been doing because you may be doing one stage on electrolysis or one stage on continuous flow chemistry but there would be another couple of stages which are conventional chemistries so this is where your reactors requirements your plant requirements become the capex requirements become much higher compared to what we have been doing in all this uh, last years but typically the asset turn is what we are looking at so this 70 crores what we are going to invest is going to be an add on facility to what we have already done and out of this we are looking at so if we don't invest this 70 crores and what happens if we invest this 70 crores so by investing 70 crores we will have only an additional revenue of about 95 to 100 crores but if we don't do it then we will lose on a lot of opportunities and mismatch in terms of delivery timelines and stuff like that so that is the reason why we are moving so fast in investing this and creating one new block of production plant at the dahi facility sir sure. and sir this uh, you know one and a half times asset turn versus three times asset turn are we being adequately compensated by margins for lower asset turn I mean, what could be the incremental margins if I can assume, say, an asset turn? Not realistically percent. incremental margins. Probably margins we are working on similar margin levels. But when we are looking at very large potential, so for example, one of these agro products that we are commercializing this year yeah. has an eventual potential to, uh, you know, give you a 200 crore revenue. now when you are looking at those kind of opportunities then of course you know there is a set off between volume and margin but because we are introducing something in a different way so at least we are able to retain the margins what we are doing on the other products in terms of electrolytes or ptcs or sds but we, despite of having double the capex uh, requirements it is not necessarily translating into a much higher margins compared to sds or the electrolytes also and sir uh, on the steady state margin side on fi25 what should one look at because currently there is under in utilization of asset and the newer you know scale up is yet to happen so probably this margins what we are seeing in the last few quarters are also not right representative so what should one realistically look at sir i mean in terms of you know top line we understand what you said but in terms of margin should it be you know not towards of say 25% uh, So from October, when the plant really will be running at a full cap- capacity, I would say a realistic uh, margin estimation of 25% would not go away. So, thanks a lot, Sir Alexander. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sabhya Sachi Mukherjee from Bajaj Finzov. Please go ahead. Yeah hi uh, thanks for the opportunity so my first question is bit of a clarification you spoke about uh, almost 25 to 30% price erosion in ptc and sda uh, that has led to revenue kind of contraction uh, but you also mentioned that the absolute ebitda per kg is somewhat uh, intact uh, mathematically then your percentage margin should look better right Uh, it is I'm, I'm better not... and that is why we are not going in the red otherwise we definitely would have been in the red with this kind of uh, top line because if you look at the overhead increase that has happened in last 9 months periodically if you just compare it on a quarter on quarter basis you will realize the steep rise in terms of your uh, uh, overhead cost 
and despite of that at this uh, top line we are able to sustain is only the reason because we are seeing an artificial gain in terms of percentage margins on these products otherwise we would definitely have been in trouble by now so far so the volumes have picked up there is no doubt about it but the values have eroded because the top line is going down because the product pricing is linked to your raw material cost which is pushing the product cost down but your per kg margin is fortunately remaining intact which is helping you to uh, sustain in this situation so essentially what you are trying to say is that the kind of resource or capacity that we have added that is not uh, yet absorbed, utilized uh, yes. is not utilized yeah, so that's what I told on the previous low. question. Yeah, because that's what exactly I told on. See, we added, we had 200 kL capacity of reactors. And in April, we started with another 200 kL being added. Now, this additional 200 kL reactors is technically a whole new plant. And we have only produced these six products which have gone into validation on the pharma and the agro side. And only three of our existing products where we required revalidation from the customer because we are going to change a plant location where we are going to produce. So besides these nine product campaigns, we have practically not utilized this plant. And we are incurring the cost 24 by 7 in terms of manpower, electricity, utilities. Even if you run four reactors out of 20 reactors, you are running your cooling plant, chilling plant, brine plant, everything is just going on and on. So it's an, it's an on a sub cost is really very high, which is detrimental for me. Got it. <clears throat> My next question is uh, on sure. the uh, demand revival uh, commentary that probably you made uh, that probably sometime in August we'll see uh, the kind of uh, shifting gears in business that, that you mentioned in the presentation as well. Uh, yes. My question is, uh, you know, in an earlier call, in Q2 call, you mentioned this to be timeline was somewhere around June 24. Now it has uh, been postponed to August. Do you see further postponing of this? I mean, uh, how do we... At, at least as far as we are concerned, I can talk only personally about Sattva Chintan. And right now I'm not talking in terms of the overall industry. But let us say if I per se talk only about Tattva Chintan, I don't see any further shifting to happen because now we have a given definitive fixed schedule. We have started procuring raw materials and started planning the production for those campaigns. So now I don't see any possibility of any postponement of these timelines, at least for us. Except for poly, now generally speaking about the overall industry per se. Uh, not only about Tattva Chintan, but general industry per se, then I would say agrochemicals, we would see a similar 2024 as we have seen in 2023. Demands are definitely not going to really pick up in terms of the agro product requirements. In terms of polymer, people are still skeptical. You know, they, they, there is a slight hope and a slight indication that things are improving. But this could be deceptive. So at least six months from now, don't expect any major change in terms of polymers or epoxies to change in a big way. Apart from that, I think uh, the SDA segment is doing well. The pharma side uh, products are doing pretty well. So uh, uh, I think the dyes and uh, the pigment industry has started to pick up uh, nicely now. So. I believe the overall indications are going towards a positive, but this is not going to happen very immediately. I would say be patient at least for next coming two quarters. And then overall per se, in terms of general industry perspective also, we should see better sentiments beginning maybe six months down the line. But as far as we are concerned personally, I would say we would not have any potential shift in terms of shifting gears it has to happen from the month of August. Got it. <laughs> Last question from my side, bit fundamental one uh, on the HDA application. Uh, now there is a lot of hue and cry about uh, you know electric vehicle and and uh, in the commercial vehicle segment, if not EV, then uh, you know hydrogen may be used as a fuel. Uh, when it comes to HDAs, it is uh, it goes specially into the emission control uh, thing. Uh, so, what's your uh, thought on this? If, if at all we see, uh, I, I, I understand it is a time-taking process, but then let's say five years down the line, 
if all the commercial vehicle turns into EV or, or let's say hydrogen, uh, do you see in, in, any opportunity uh, in SDA or do you uh, kind of think of uh, compensating it with other uh, your uh, product lines? Yeah. So, no, if you say in terms of timelines, so let us say the EV cars, the passenger cars. So it is very hypothetical to state that in the next five years, everything will become EV. So this is practically not possible. Again, as you rightly mentioned, uh, commercial, large commercial vehicles getting into EV is still way, way, way down the line. But potentially, it's not five years, I would say at least a timeline of 15 to 20 years. Again, as EV technology has taken a couple of decades to really start showing penetration, hydrogen is just being demonstrated on a pilot scale, I would say, not even pilot scale. So it is still probably a potentially couple of decades away uh, when we really talk of hydrogen because, again, this technology, there are a lot of concerns with related to safety, and commercialization and making hydrogen available at uh, various outlets in a safe manner. So there are a lot of things that are getting into it. Uh, so of course, I would say 20 years should be a definitive uh, phase. It may lose its growth phenomena potentially over next 10 years down the line and then come to a stable phase and then gradual decline potentially 15 to 20 years down the line. Now. This this is also our personal thought process. That how will we protect our business in case that, let us say, hypothetically, if someone is feeling this can happen in the next 10 years, what will you do after 10 years? And that is the reason why we moved into the electrolyte space on the battery space, where, you know, this, if, if you go from uh, the uh, fuels, and get into any EV or any other mode of uh, uh, battery systems, you will require electrolytes. So let us be present there. And we have made an entry in at a very tight time. So we have been working on this uh, electrolyte uh, space now nearly a decade. I, I believe it was 2011, the first time we got introduced to it and started developing the product. So it's more than a decade when now we have established ourselves as a recognized player. So except for lithium battery, we are there in most of the segments where we people come to us and check with us whether we can offer them the electrolyte salts or the electrolytes for these batteries. So we made that conscious choice a lot of years back that what if the fuels cars don't you know, as you are assuming that these things will die over a period of time, then what we will do. So this is an alternative uh, plan for us to keep the business thriving and growing all the time. Got it. So, so directionally, let's say, you know, if not five years, 10 years or 15 years down the line, our, you know, mix of uh, the segments will look a bit different. SDA will probably come down and then electrolyte salts will go. That is directionally the thought process, right? Right, and these are all, see, basically now there is this new application they are working on in terms of plastic reprocessing. So this was never heard of probably five years back where the SDA could be used. Now this is something new that has come up. So there are a lot of things that people are working on. So these are all zeolite-based applications. And when it comes to precision, they require SDA. So if not this application, what will be the next big thing? So there are a lot of companies who are working on these things in day in, day out, and nobody is going to let their business die. So from Euro 6 to going to Euro 7, again, changes a lot of equations in terms of SDA consumption. The products that are required in terms of SDAs are going to change. So a lot of changes are going to happen, and all these things are being pushed so that the large catalyst companies can continue to have their businesses intact and continue to grow. And they are also simultaneously working on this variety of different applications where they can synthesize new zeolites for new applications. Got it, sir. Extremely helpful. Uh, thanks. That's all from my side. <laughs> Thank you. The next question is from Sanjay Jain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thanks, Chintanbar. Uh, thanks for taking my question. 
I got three of them. Uh, first on this uh, KTX of 70 crore, what we have announced today. Uh, when are we expecting the commercialization of this plant? October. October of 2024. October of 2024. So we will be able to put this plant in next, say, seven, eight months. Yes. So we have already completed the designing part. Okay. All the vendors are already coming in from the same supply chain what we have utilized in our past expansion. Even our construction uh, company which we are going to utilize remains the same. And we have just inducted on board a new PMC team which is something different. So we have brought in a multinational PMC team to take care of this project. And this purposely we have taken in account because you know, it's more professional in terms of the earlier PMC we were using. And we will also have a feel whether we want to utilize the same PMC for our upcoming new Greenfield project, you know. So it would be a good hand-holding and a kind of an experience sharing with this new PMC. What is the PMC team? Can you elaborate? CBRE is what we are inducting. Okay. We have already inducted, not inducting, but we have already inducted. And uh, will we require this to get again audited because this will be technically a separate plant, right? Only if we want to produce SDS from there, but uh, no, we are not going to produce the SDS. For the agro uh, intermediates, specifically we are bringing in this for the three new ag intermediates that we are commercializing. And uh, uh, there uh, we will not require any kind of uh, validation, revalidation of the product. Fair enough. Uh, second on the SDA, you said that the price erosion is 25-30% and YOI revenue growth uh, decline is 40 plus percent. Uh, so technically, not, you're telling that there is... I'll just correct this. Uh, so not all SDAs we have seen, but our largest SDA has seen this kind of a correction in terms of value because the raw material prices came down from $18 to $10.8. Okay. And that is what is leading to the price drop from $12 to $9 in that particular SDA. And now, so this is when the raw material price was $12. Now it has gone down to $10.8. So we are expecting the further price to go down to $8.5. So okay, currently so the price has come down from $12 to $9. And we are expecting it to go down to $8.5. But it is purely the conversion of what quantity of raw material per kg we are using to make this SDA. And this is the drop in the raw material price. So it is pure mathematics. So if $10 come or I apna consumption equivalent to two low dollar here, so we have to reduce two dollars from the product price. It is very simple mathematics that we follow with the customer. Fair enough. So with this fall in the raw material, does it still make a sense to be a backward integration which we were talking earlier? Yes. So this is this is the product that we have already backward integrated. Now with this kind of a price drop, if you are able to buy at the same price at which you are able to produce, then why would you want to produce it? So the right. backward so integration we are just going for a strategic thirty percent production in house. So that is, we continue to do that because that is our strategy and that is what we have presented to the customers. That non-Chinese origin raw material, absolutely indigenized, made in India. And this is what a non-China supply chain is what we are offering. And that is what has got them interested and we have got this opportunity with the large customer. So we continue to produce 30% in-house, but balance, we don't even see a reason why we should unnecessarily occupy your plant. Got it, got it. Uh, next, coming to the uh, PASC segment, uh, now that all the products are in place and we are telling that we are very confident of uh, production, uh, when should uh, the real revenue recognition start? Will it start in June quarter or you expect something August. to come? Yeah, so it will quarter. begin from the month of August, so quarter of July to September. <clears throat> okay. So full that quarter, if you say, then it will be October to December. So, so this will be a part quarter, and October to December will be a full quarter where you will recognize the revenue from PSC. 
got it. And on the SDA, we said that we are now approved for the three products and fourth is awaited. Um, when should we start that revenue recognition? I would say a realistic revenue recognition from October of 24, when you know these large customers and the second product with our largest existing customers, both we expect to have commercialization from September or October full scale commercialization so i would say october of course the revenues in sts will continue to and it has already begun and it will continue to grow from to date until september but october we will start seeing a real shift in that uh, phenomena got it uh, one on the uh, guidance you gave for this year, you said that 400 to 425 crores, if I look at the lower end, we are talking of 105 crores of sales next quarter, 230, so anywhere between 105 to 130. And in first nine months, we have done an EBITDA margin of 17.6, so technically we are talking that next quarter we will be hitting a margin of worth of 20 to 23%. Uh, uh, you're saying that this 11 crores, what is got delayed, will get recognized, and yes. then there will be a growth sequentially. Correct. That's a fair understanding, right? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Uh, one last before I get back onto the queue. Um, more on the electrolyte side, uh, what's our talk on the uh, customer side? Uh, when are they completing their automation project? Uh, uh, when we can really expect our offtake to happen, will it happen in CY24 or it will, it will take one year for them and for us it's only a CY25 story? Mm -hmm. So this our large customer is automizing their battery assembly plant. And mm -hmm. this will go online from August of 2024. <coughs> okay. Right. And typically the number of batteries that they assemble today manually and the number of batteries that they will assemble by this automated line is going to become four times. Okay. And this is their first automated line, which they will become operational in August of 24. And they have got subsidized and low cost funding from the government of the US, where they will eventually set up four such assembly lines. Over. But this will not happen. In additional three more assembly lines will be set up over a span of next two years. So from 24 to 26, they will eventually set up four assembly lines. So your X demand of today virtually translates into 14 to 16 X in next three years time. Considering they even produce at 50% of their capacities, then also this will translate into a very large business over a period of next two to two and a half years time. And that product is uh, verified successful. That, that's yeah, successful. that we have been supplying since last one and a half years, well, almost two years now, I think. Fair enough. I have more questions, but uh, positive of time, I will get back onto the queue. Thanks, Chintanmay, and best sure. for many coming for this. Thank you. The next question is from Krishnan Parwani, JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi Chintan Bhai. Uh, just two clarifications from my side. Uh, so the first is, uh, I think since you mentioned about a one and a, a one point five times asset turns, so on your capacity expansion, which you did at about a hundred and fifty odd crores, you'd be able to do two twenty five crores of incremental revenue. So that means about a six twenty five crores of next no, revenue. Is that correct? Sorry. Which hundred and fifty crores are you talking? The one that the you did uh, during the uh, IPO. Oh, okay. so, no, no. So that was a mix of having PTCs, SPAs, and the PSA all together. So there, uh, definitely, we had an uh, about two hundred. What was our capex? Two. 250. So even so, of course, from the IPA process, it was maybe hundred and. 50 or 160 crores that was promised and we we did about 250 250 crores of capex uh, in that and there we see a uh, asset turn of about two so that definitely takes us from 400 crores to 900 crores in terms of revenue now what i'm trying to say is these new product launches that are coming in the psc where the pharma and the agro intermediates these are all coming in as multi-stage chemistries so let us say if I produce X kgs of a product 
theoretically i am producing 3x or 4x kgs of total chemicals to eventually come down to x because multi stage uh, stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 everywhere you are producing x x x to go to the x product so theoretically you are producing 3x but ultimately selling only 1x out of it so that is what is causing the asset turn if i only say on talk in terms of psc and which will be our focus of next 3 years in terms of any development and this is going to be our large growth driver over next 3 years then i would say a asset turn of 1.5 is what we are looking at so the new 70 crores that we are intending to invest right now is specifically for this psc the agro intermediate that is where we are looking only at 1.5 asset turn understood so basically earlier that uh, of that uh, the initial capex or the ipo capex that you had incurred so there you had probably guided about a three times asset turn which you have lowered it to two times correct and then the incremental for psc it is it is a 1.5x that is right. correct right right okay so uh, th th that's that's clear just one uh, last clarification so uh, in terms of whatever incremental revenue that you know you're going to do from let's say fy24 onwards so could you break it down like let's say um, what percentage of incremental revenue would be from psc and uh, let's say if the incremental revenue is 3 400 crores over the next 3 years and uh, the break up between the psc and the sds that's it Primarily, the growth is going to come from PASC and SDA, 60% from PASC and 40% from SDA. Understood. We are looking at about uh, so uh, the major, so all these six products going into commercialization. So all this will take impact from month of August. Yeah. So the first four months, if we exclude, then if on a whole year basis we are talking, then we are looking at about 200 crores in terms of revenue from the PSC segment and about an additional revenue of incremental revenue of 80 to 100 crores on the SDA side. I'm sorry, what number did you say for the incremental for PSC? 200 crores. 200 crores and for SDA it is 80 crores. So roughly about a 680 crores more or less. Correct. Okay, understood, understood, understood. Uh, uh, thank you so much for answering my questions and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vipin Goyal from Rabalis Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I had one question on the on the flame retardant segment. So, I mean, at one point, we were expecting about 200 crore peak sales uh, for the product that we were developing, which now we have decided not to produce because of the market conditions. So, I mean, what are our plans here? And... Uh, also, if you could talk about the second product that you are developing in this segment, and which you talked about uh, earlier in the call. So, so all what, the clients what, in this segment are basically polymer manufacturers. It is not that we are never going to produce. It is purely because of the current market situations and the price at which these products are available, which are ridiculously low. It doesn't make any commercial sense to produce this right now. Just to give you an example, one of the first product that we have introduced in this uh, flame retardant category. Let us say my raw material cost comes to $2.8. The product is available at $2.9 today. No, nobody can make, see if you add 1 kg plus 1 kg, you can make maximum 2 kgs. You cannot make 3 kgs, right? And this product pricing is in such a way as if people are able to make 1 kg out of only 500 kg raw material. Which is unrealistic. So wherever, and my key competitors in this area are the people who have large capacities to produce bromine, which is the key raw material for that. So I believe the product pricing is happening globally in a way where they are only getting rid of the bromine that they produce. So they are just valuating their bromine and not evaluating the product per se in terms of flame retardants which they are selling. But if I say in terms of raw material cost, if 60% cost comes from bromine in this particular product. So if let us say a $3 product, $1.8 is coming out of bromine as a raw material cost. Now this product is available at $2.8. So practically they are trying to sell bromine and uh, not actually considering any overheads or margins on the rest of the chemistries that they are doing. 
so as of today this is not this same product uh, was available at four and a half dollars, five, six, six and a half, and went up to eight dollars. You know, but a standard pricing of this product is about five, five and a half dollars a kilo, and that that is where it has any economic sense to produce. But because the demand is very low, very low, it's probably not even fifty percent than it used to be a year and a half back, and that is what has caused this price to drop. People are sitting on large piece of inventories trying to just get rid of it at whatever price they are able to. So as of today, it doesn't make sense to produce these products, and that is why we are holding off. But we have very interesting negotiation going on with one of the customers in the Western world. Uh, it's a very large potential customer where we have been fully approved right now. And uh, of course, the business is not happening per se because of the pricing situation that persists. Now this customer has slowly and steadily come to a point where they want uh, they have agreed on a pricing mechanism, irrespective of what the market price would be. So based on the global raw material pricing and a conversion model, that what would be the overheads to produce at Tatwa, and let us say Tatwa has a 10% margin over it, and what is the product cost. So this is the kind of a mechanism which they have nearly agreed. I am not announcing this today because they have not formally agreed or it is not 100%. But they are moving in the, this direction where they understand that today it's an artificially low pricing, but when the market turns and suddenly these prices start to rise, the availability becomes a question mark and you have to pay very high spot prices, and which people have done in last three years, you know, paying abnormally very high prices in terms of spot buying. So they don't want to get into that situation. And virtually we are very near to close this argument with them to have a contract in place, which will be governed in terms of a fixed margin for the work and fixed overhead, and the price of the product varies in terms of the raw material pricing as it as and when it changes. The second product which we introduce again, it comes from the same category. It's a flame retardant getting into polymers and similar set of customers which we are working. With. Sure, sir. This this really helps. Uh, sir, one more thing on the on the SDA uh, front. I mean, what uh, what we understand is that the first and the fourth customer are back to uh, pre-COVID levels. Uh, so, I mean, just to understand what what portion of the pre-COVID peak sales that we are doing in terms of volume, what what would they be? And uh, then yeah. that uh, the customer number two, the China customer, which is not buying since probably last fourteen or fifteen odd months, was buying nearly 90% of what my customer one used to buy, maybe 80%, yeah? So not very less than my customer number one. And this customer has literally vanished from the scene in last 14 or 15 months. That is a kind of demand situation within China where they are selling very less quantum of their own products within their own territory. Now, despite of that, we are seeing this growth. So you can understand what the customer number one and customer number four are bringing in terms of volumes, nearly offsetting what the Chinese customer is not offtaking. Again, if you have to map the fifth customer in this, uh, in this uh, on the backdrop of this, this volume, is the largest potential customer, even potentially much larger than my largest customer today. Okay. Uh, and sir, on the uh, on the STF end again, you had alluded some quarters back that there's a high cost inventory sitting. Um, so, so is that all uh, being utilized? Has it has been utilized, or is it still uh, we are holding still some part of it? No, no, we still have a lot of idle capacities lying around. And this, I expect, we should we should overcome this scenario from July or August. Is what I strongly feel, and I'm very confident of that. In fact. Okay, so so will that also be flowing into the margins? I mean, uh, our margins. Of course, yeah, yeah. Because this is idle cost is a huge cost. It's an unbearable cost. It's a huge burden for us because, uh, as I explained repeatedly, it's the uh, all your equipment facilities are running but producing hardly anything. It's a huge cost for you. Just imagine bringing people from Bharuj to Dahej, it's a distance of 50 kilometers. We are what, how many buses we have? 12? 
we have 12 buses across the shift and now we have just doubled that right from 6 to 12. So even if you produce or not produce, you are paying for six buses on a daily basis to transport your employees from Baruch to the head and back. And this is what a cost of 24 lakhs a month. So this is the kind of cost that you keep on adding if your plant is not operating at a full capacity. So once this becomes fully operational, your revenue recognition starts happening and all this cost automatically starts getting absorbed in a decent way. And that is where you will see a decent growth in terms of EBITDA as well. Uh, one last question. Uh, when on the on the SPF and since now we are seeing uh, picking up in volumes. Uh, uh, so how do you think about the PT segment? How should we think about it in the future? And what kind of growth can be uh, PTC segment, actually, there is no real drop in terms of volumes, okay? The volumes are nearly the same. Of that, There may not be a growth. There is a significant erosion in terms of pricing. Just for an example, our largest selling phase transfer catalyst is TBAB. Let us say about what, by last March, okay, March of 2023, we were selling this product at 425 rupees in Indian market. Today, this product is selling at 250, 275 rupees. Now, how do you compensate your top line growth when your product prices, this is not necessarily I'm talking that margins have dropped, only your product prices have dropped so drastically. But in PTCs, we have also seen margin erosion because there is very fierce competition in PTC in domestic market. Our margins and customers in exports have been very well protected. But here, the scenario is a bit different when we talk of domestic customers, where uh, it's not that it's a catalyst and people say that it's a very critical component of reaction, so we don't want to change the source. That is a philosophy which most of the MLC customers uh, live with. But it is not the scenario when we talk of the domestic customers. So here people tend to change source of catalyst even for a five rupee change in their product pricing. So here we have erosion of margins from the domestic front, but at least on the export front, where seventy percent of our PTC revenue again comes from the exports, but those margins have remained pretty much intact. So, so volume largely should be, I mean, a similar level going forward. So, sorry. The volumes for PTC still sell still remain at these levels. Uh, PTC has up. never been a very exponential growth business for us. So PTC has been organically growing at 10 to 15 percent per year. And so this year may be an exception to that, that there may not be a volume growth. It's a top line degrowth because of the product price has gone down. So we see a top line degrowth in that segment. But in terms of per se, the business, it remains very much stable. In fact, for the upcoming 2024 year, we have already business in place for most of my existing large MNC customers. So those businesses have been secured. So I'm pretty much relaxed in terms of PTC sales for the calendar year 2024 already. Sure, sir. That's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last question. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.